Michael, mm-hmm. you came to visit me in LA. I mean, this is when I still had my Model 3, right? And so, you know, I took you for a spin. I let, I let you drive the car too. Actually, you've also been in the car when I was driving the Macan, right? Yes. So I'm going to ask you a question and be honest with me. Okay, be completely honest. Do you think I'm a good driver? Yes. I think you're really? a good driver. Yes, I think you're a good driver, but you scared the shit out of me. <laughs> you know, okay, that's really funny because I think if you ask any of my friends, they yeah. would totally agree with you. Oh, well, actually, some might just say bad driver because I scare the shit out of them, but yeah. I actually, I believe I'm a good driver, but I also believe I'm a good aggressive driver, which I think you have to be in yes. LA. Yes. Or even just like in a big city, you gotta be aggressive but mm-hmm. still confident and safe that like whatever you're doing is gonna be fine. See, that's the thing, that's, that's what I was gonna say. Like, you're not a bad driver for being aggressive. A good driver is, I think, is always defined to be defensive, right? But yeah. like you said, in the context of in LA, you have to be a little bit more aggressive. And I can attest to this, not because I lived in LA, but because I lived in the Philippines and that's where I started driving. And back home, you also have to be extremely aggressive yeah. just so you can tell people exactly what you're going to do, right? Because it's yeah, like- Yeah, well, exactly, you gotta squeeze it you got to cut yes. people off because yes. if you don't you will never get let through exactly that, that's just exactly. that's just how it is okay yeah. so this brings up the question then of like what to you makes a good driver or like what is a bad driver to you okay yeah no that's a very good topic so you want to start with this one or do you want me to start right off the bat okay like, what to you is like what's one of the things you're like oh this is a good driver let's start with a good i think a good driver will always know how to modulate the brakes when you see a stop yeah. i judge people i judge people's driving skills with this yeah. one <laughs> i know when exactly i see a where stop with this. <laughs> when i see a stop i sit still and I feel like my head goes like, like this. <laughs> yeah. You're a when bad you driver. When you inadvertently bow every time you yes. come to a stop, you're just constantly <laughs> bowing. You're a bad driver if you make me go like this. If you make this me bow every time. Wait, I, okay, hold on. Very relevant to this. I had a rental this past week in LA because I'm, I'm moving back, but I was, I was there for a friend's wedding okay. and I had a rental. Actually, it was the rental I, I talked to you about last the week. The BMW? Yeah, it was the, the BMW, the new 4 Series Coupe, okay? Mm-hmm. And look, I, I was going crazy because I thought that I could not brake for shit. Like, I, really? every time I slowed down in the BMW, it was like slow, like barely slowing, barely, barely slowing, and then like it's like the brake suddenly like caught on, and I'm just like jutting the whole time. <laughs> And I felt so bad because, you know, Maggie, my fiance, she's in the car. And, like, I'm not trying to get her car sick. But, like, I'm, I was super, like, hyper aware of braking every time in that car. And, like, nine times out of ten, it's a rough. It's, like, a really bad brake. Really bad oh, slowdown. How I couldn't get it. I just could not get it right. And, like, I just came back, right? And I took my car in to get serviced. And, you know, driving my car, driving the loaner. It's the exact same car. just a little bit newer. It's a Macan. And I'm like, I'm slowing down. And I'm like, wait, no, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. It's not me. It's that freaking BMW. <laughs> it's the car. <laughs> it's the car. I'm totally fine braking in that car. I was drove many different cars when I was in the Bay. Totally fine. I don't know what it is with that car. Like, my foot was, like, so gentle. And, like, I'm being so, like, it's like, dude. I hated that car. I could not brake in that car. Actually, this is a good point that you brought up. If I think that you, the way you step on the brakes defines whether you're a good driver or a bad driver, it the same goes for when you apply the gas, right? Or oh, I, totally. I was, I was thinking like of a, another word because yeah. some people are electric cars now, but yeah, basically throttle, the throttle, the throttle accelerator. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> this is this is a funny story that you brought up with. Uh, related to the BMW. Out of all the cars I've driven, I've driven many, many cars throughout the years. There's only one car that I could not, for the life of me, even to this day, properly modulate the accelerator or the throttle. Yeah. And it's Subaru Forester XT, the one with the turbo. For some reason, the way they tuned the, the throttle, it just jumps. And every single time, this has become a, a game for me. Every single time like a family member or a friend yeah. borrows the car for like a short drive or something, I wait for them to say something. But usually they just <laughs> keep quiet, but some of my good friends have been like, that was really interesting to drive that car. Cause they say the most gentle, like pressure applied yeah, to yeah, the yeah. gas, it makes them lurch forward. 
it's such a weird thing. And I'm so like, wait, so you haven't mastered it yet? I don't think I've mastered it. I think I've just gotten used to it. Like when I when I step in the car, I'm just like, <laughs> just keep going. It's like it's a fast wow. car. It's a fast car for what it is. Yeah. It's, so I remember I took my my coworkers when I used to work at um, this commercial real estate company, took them out to lunch. And like, who's driving today? I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I brought my wife's Forester today, so let's go uh, hop in. And they sat inside, and the first thing, and you know, to me, I was just like normally driving, right? <laughs> the first thing my the guy who was in the passenger seat told me, he's like, whoa, this car's fast. Because <laughs> that's the impression you get. It's almost like an electric car, where it's like you just feel that sudden surge, and yeah, it just yeah, comes yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah, it's yeah. so bizarre. And so I think, I think yeah, some automakers really, um, tune the car a very interesting like, way oh, it's like low end torque that makes you feel <laughs> yeah. like your car is really yeah. fast even it's though it's so really bizarre not fast. <laughs> yeah exactly so when you said that i'm like oh yeah that's exactly like my forester i think i've just gotten used to it yeah wait okay well so there's going off of this another thing that it just came to mind about signs of a good driver mm-hmm. and this is this basically parking can you oh, park God. but two types of parking so one, and I've actually gotten, I've gotten complimented on this. Well, I've gotten complimented on both. <laughs> I'm not tooting my horn like I'm a good driver, but like I really like my parking skills. Yeah. So one is just simply reversing. Being, re- being able to reverse into a spot is like, I thought that's like level one. Like, can mm-hmm. you reverse into a spot in a parking lot and do it smoothly and quickly? Uh, like, instead of like, you know, slowly like inching yourself back, just like one smooth motion, done, yeah. perfectly within the lines. Using a backup camera, I think it's totally legit. Um, yes. Like every car has them now these days. But can you, but a lot of people still have have a tough time using backup cameras, which is yes. very odd to me because I'm like, like <laughs> the lines are there. Your they don't there. trust it. That's why. They don't yeah. trust the camera. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like stage one, right? Level one. I think stage two is being able to back up out of like a driveway or like maneuver out of like some sort of weird parking situation where it's like it's not normal it's like a curve or you're trying to go around some cars because one time i was i was returning a car uh to lift like lift rentals and the guy was like oh yeah just like back your car into that spot it wasn't even that hard it was like it was like a j it's like a, it's like a j turn but it was a little bit okay. tight and he's like do you need me to do it for you i'm like no i'm just backing the, I'm, just, I'm backing the car in and i did it and he's like we, we got out and he's like wow that's you're the only person today that's been able to do that <laughs> Wow. Wait, that's insane. It was the, the end bar's of the night. really low today. Yeah, I was like, the bar is so low today. It makes me feel good, but the bar yeah. is so low. Uh, and even yesterday, I, I backed my car into a spot at Trader Joe's, and there was a guy in a motorcycle next to me, and he complimented me when I no got way. out. Yeah. yeah. He's like, wow. I can tell uh, you you really know how to drive. <laughs> See, okay, here's another side. I'm glad you brought this up because here's another side. You're good, you're a good driver. If I see you back into a parking space, <laughs> if you're facing, if you're facing the road, because why do we do that, Yi? Why do we back up into a parking space instead of parking? Because my answer, it's a flex. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a, exactly my answer is because we're better than you. No. <laughs> You know why? Because we can. Because we can. can. (laughs) But the mindset here is just, it's just much more, it's much easier to leave the parking space. Way easier. Way easier. Parking space when you're facing the road. It's much more convenient. Uh, The only time that I don't do that is when we're going grocery shopping at Costco, for or for example, sure, because we sure. have to load up the back, right? But <laughs> not normally, me just saying I went to Trader Joe's and backed in. But it was because <laughs> I'm not buying a ton. You're, you're not buying sense. a lot. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So unless the parking space that you're going into has like one of those um, like really, really wide, like kind of sidewalk thingy yeah, where yeah. you can back into a space and you can still load your stuff. But yeah, we back into a corner. If you back into your parking spot, then you're a good driver. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have one like, one point that's contrary to this. I had a roommate in college. Uh, I remember him. His <laughs> hey, shout out to him. His name was Archie. Okay. When I first met, really random story. When I met this guy, 
He was like, oh, he, his friend was in the, with him in the dorm. I was like, oh, nice to meet you. I'm Yi. He's like, oh, I'm Archie. I was like, oh, awesome. Nice to meet you. What's your friend's name? And he's like, my name is Bishop. And I was like, let me get this straight. You're Archie. You're Bishop. <laughs> and I was like, was this planned at all? <laughs> they're like, no. What are you talking about? Because they're both like exchange students from China. And they just picked random names. And I'm like, this is incredible. <laughs> you guys have the best names. Did they even know? Did they no. Even, and, they no, no, they still they, don't. They had no idea the combination of their names. So... <laughs> Anyways, Archie, he was a really awesome guy, and uh-huh. uh, he, he drove an A4, which, by the way, in college, driving a brand new A4, phenomenal. Uh, and he's like, hey, yeah. let me know if you want to borrow my car anytime, feel free to take it. And I was like, yo, awesome. So I had to go pick someone up from the airport, and I was, uh, and I was driving his car, uh, and, 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 but like, I, I realized one thing, like, when, the more we talked, like when we hung out, uh, he, he told me that he couldn't park straight like head in he could only reverse in because apparently back in china the general like rule is just like you just back in and so really? they, they have no experience going head in and obviously this is not like a blanket thing for all of china yeah. but yeah not uncommon so yeah it's like just because you can back in doesn't mean you're a good driver actually <laughs> that's a good point okay that's a good yeah. point okay here the, here's another one you're a good driver if you can parallel park that was my next one. My, that, was my, yeah. that, was my, that was my next one. If you yeah. can park, yeah. If, if you can back in, if you can parallel park. Are yeah. you good at parallel parking? I think I'm decent at parallel, parallel parking. I used to be really good because of where I lived. And also, yeah. I stayed in Chicago for a little bit. And so, um, I've been exposed to that sort of, like, parking situation. Uh, also, when we went to Hawaii, like, parking there is horrendous. Yeah. You, can't, you can't park anywhere. So, I've lived in, or I've experienced living in, like, busy Metro, metropolitan area. So I'm familiar with, with uh, parallel parking, which is an interesting thing because I have a friend, a very good friend of mine, he's a pilot. And he, he used to be in them, like my older videos here in uh, Auto Enthused. Uh, okay. His name is Marco. He drives uh, a Subaru WRX as well. And I remember I used to make so much fun of him because whenever we're in downtown, and downtown San Diego isn't nearly as busy as downtown <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Downtown San it's Diego nice. is like, it's yeah, quaint. it's like <laughs> it's like it's nice like place. two o'clock in the morning, Sunday Sunday morning in LA. That's downtown San Diego. Yeah. It's not busy, <laughs> but he gets really flustered when it time when it's time for him to parallel park. Sure. So, I would actually have to switch uh, spots with him. I would yeah. have to drive for him. He's like, oh, let oh. me park for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Marco, you're getting roasted right. You're yeah. getting dragged by Michael right now. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> okay, but. There's a caveat though. There's a caveat. If you can parallel park without causing traffic, then you're a good driver. Ooh, so I say this yes, because there's a lot yes. of people who can parallel park, but it takes them forever mm-hmm, to park, mm-hmm. and that's uh, yeah. that's not that's not a really good sign of being a good driver. So that's a bad. I, right I actually I'm always super cognizant of how fast I do it because I don't want to hold up traffic. So I'm always like, I need to get this right the first time, and that's it. Yes. And like, yes. I still get a little, okay, I will say, because I don't drive like a big, big car, so most recently, one of the rentals I had was a Chevy Tahoe. And okay. those things are freaking massive. Yeah. And so I had to parallel park that in SF. <laughs> and Ooh. let me tell you, man, I was, <laughs> oh my God, I was freaking <laughs> terrified. And that car, even though it's like a brand new Chevy Tahoe, all it had was a backup cam and those are really useful but for a car that large i'm actually more used to it having like a 360 camera because like it, i can't even tell where the front of the car ends every time i parked yeah. that car in our driveway i was always i was always under oh actually i was always overestimating how long the, the hood was so i always had had more space to pull up but i had no idea it didn't even have um like radar and so when I'm like, oh, pulling, no. like yeah, how can a brand new car not have radar? That is Dude, bizarre. These cars that were spec so terribly. Yeah, so like absolutely no idea how far forward I am. I'm like, I can barely see the size because the car is so big. That was tough. That was really tough. So huge respect to anyone that can park one of those full size SUVs. Yes, without any assistance, like radar or cameras. Yeah, I've driven I mean, um, a 96. We used to own a 90. It's a 96, 95, I think, Suburban. 
And that thing mm. is humongous, like especially I've, during that time. I've driven something very similar. I think it yeah. was maybe a couple years newer, but having driven yeah. one of those, yeah, those, those monsters. Those are monsters. They're humongous, yeah. And mind you, we were driving this back home in the Philippines. And so oh, the, the, the streets there were, are very tiny. But the funny thing is, the funny thing is, when you drive a big car, at least back then, when you drive a big car back home, um, people are generally just afraid of you. So they they stay out of the, they stay out. I of think the way. that's still true these days. I, okay, like when, okay. I, when I see like a huge truck or something, I like I give it space. I know, I'm actually, me too. I'm not confident that they see me. That's the thing. So that's the thing. So I, that actually brings me to another good point. Like this is to me the uh, or this brings me to a point. This this to me is the quintessential quintessentially the description of a good driver. I think a good driver will always be just aware of what's going on in their surroundings, right? I think that's really just what you need to do to be a good driver. You just need to be aware. And you, when you're aware, you also are aware of the fact that when you need to make a any sort of movement, like you're yeah. turning, you're switching yeah. lanes, that people are also aware of what you're doing. You don't just jerk the wheel all of a sudden and you're like, oh, hey, I'm here in this new lane. Totally. Like you, I can't think of the word you, but you basically, um, you show people that exactly what you're doing you without have, signaling. I know what's what that, it is. What's that word? You have spatial it. awareness. You have spatial awareness. And yes, and you just like, as long as people know exactly what you're doing, because the more that they know what you're doing, the more predictable. That's the word I was thinking about. So if mm. you are predictable as a driver, like I see you driving around and I know exactly where you're going, what you're going to do, even if you're not using your, your turn signals. I mean, using your turn signals is uh, a, a defining always, thing. Always, use always your use your freaking turns. turn signals. Yeah, They're always for use a reason. Your turn exactly. Oh my gosh. But Even if it's for like some... the quickest merge or something, always right. use those signals. Always use them. Always use them. But I think the, the point is if you are predictable as a driver, yeah. you are a very good driver. If you are unpredictable, then you're a terrible driver. And I driver. think that's what makes me like a quote unquote bad driver is that I'm not always predictable. <laughs> it's because See? you don't know which way I'm going to swerve. <laughs> Especially okay, if you're I, a passenger. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the story like right like the moment I I hopped in Yi's uh, Macan, I'm like oh this is a nice Macan and I'm like holy shit because Yi just started like driving like really fast and I'm like oh crap and it's it I had to recalibrate my thinking because I'm like okay I'm not in San Diego anymore I'm definitely in L A yeah and you definitely have to drive like that like you have to be aggressive and in in a way in that culture. That is their way of being predictable. When you try to put your nose in where you need to go, sure. people are like, oh, he needs to merge. Right? It's yeah. like, he, he is the way, signaling to me. With he is his signaling car. that he is Not trying the turn to cross. signal, but with the car itself, <laughs> that he is trying to come into this lane. Freaking LA. <laughs> I swear. But what make, I think what makes Yi a good driver is the way he does it, it's very precise. And it's very precise, and it's, there's a lot of confidence in it. So what you don't want in a driver is not having the confidence. And <laughs> confidence I've, is key. Confidence is key. so key. <laughs> yeah. And I've, I've, I've you know, read, uh, I've, uh, I think my friend was it. Yeah, my friend, he drove, um, he drove me around one time. And I just remember him being not confident at all. Like, Ooh. should I turn? Should oh, I stop? No. Should I? I'm like, oh, oh no. God. I'm like hanging on to like the holy shit handle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, please let me off. I, I want to get out now. No, that that's definitely. Um, I think that 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 there's a fine line there. Being aggressive. Oh, there's but totally. I think, yeah, a I think though, line. being predictable is the is the word to me that defines a really good driver. So, you were gonna yeah. say something. So I think the the whole of like the you, when you talked about like the merging or like just signaling or indicating one thing to me that I I like to do. But I like to do it in a very specific way, and and I think many people could could attest that this is a bad driver. But what I enjoy doing is because when on the highway, I'm on the leftmost lane, the innermost lane, right? Like it's like the fast lane, either it's carpool or whatever it is. When you're in that lane, but then you, how long do you wait until you try to merge over when you need to get off the highway? Mm. So. Right, mm -hmm. it's like when you see, oh, I see the sign for my exit, which means I know my exit's in one mile. At what yeah. point do I start merging over? 
And my thing that I like to do, which is a little chaotic, I realize, is I want to wait until the last possible moment and then merge over simultaneously, all like, you know, four, five, six lanes. Yes, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And but the key here is that I want to do it smoothly without having to accelerate or slow down. So mm -hmm. like if I can like kind of like go over in a very smooth way, that to mm -hmm. me is like that's key. If you have to like accelerate then break, then accelerate then break and cut people off, that's bad because then you're making it really dangerous. Yeah. Actually, that's a very good point because there are two uh, places here in San Diego where I have to do exactly what you just did. Normally when I see, yeah, normally when I see like a sign that says you're a mile away from your exit, yeah. then I start merging into the, like the next few lanes, right? But there are two areas here in San Diego near near my where I live. Uh, it's basically a merging point. Um, it's it's a if you want to exit towards uh, to get into an, a ramp to a, another um, freeway, there's this one long. Um, it's weird because it kind of branches off to another road, and so you're getting multiple streams of traffic. And if I were to merge like as far as like as far back as like a mile away, I'm going to be stuck in traffic and it's going yes, to pile yes, up. Yes, yes, it's going to pile yes. up. Totally so get the it. yeah, the technique there and the only reason is because there some uh vehicles are also merging into where I am currently driving. Yeah. And so there there's a huge pile up. And so the technique there is about like 0.25 of miles away, then you start merging and then you'll yeah. realize that there's no pile up in the front. So it's yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. one of those weird things that you have to I guess it's just like, this just the way it is. <laughs> That's a really great rationale for waiting. I don't have a great rationale like that. Mine's just pure habit and like <laughs> desire. Oh, I have another one. I have another one. You, okay. you just brought this up. I have another one. Uh, you are a bad driver. If you are in the far, like the far left, uh, what is oh. it? Like the fast lane. If you're in the fast yes. lane, yes. the farthest to the left, if you're in the number one lane, that's number one, right? I don't know what the numbers are, but if you're yeah, in the like innermost lane, the, the innermost, innermost lane, lane, yeah, and you are holding up traffic, yes. you are the slowest. You are a terrible, terrible driver. <laughs> you are you are actually ruining the environment because what you're you doing are. is you're causing yeah. everyone to slow down, which wastes gas and burns. You fuel. are, you are taking food off of people's families' <laughs> table by doing this. <laughs> you're a detriment, not kidding. I can't yeah. say. You're the worst society has to offer. <laughs> I absolutely hate people who drive slow in the fast lane. But I have a story about this, Yi. Okay. My wife is a very aggressive driver. And when oh. I say aggressive, she's also very, very much a... Uh, she's road ragey. <laughs> really? <laughs> Used oh, to be. Oh, man. Used to be. So she's learned her lesson. Uh -huh. But I remember when I first met her, she was 19 or 20. Yeah, she was 19 or 20 back then. And we would drive her dad's old Explorer. I think it was like a 94, 93 Explorer. So it doesn't really go that fast. But she would stay in the in the fast lane. And every every time like people behind us are obviously being are getting really annoyed by this fact. Yeah. They would flash their lights or or whatever, give her dirty looks. She'd be like, they can move around me. She's that. Oh, no. I'm like, oh, oh yeah. God. Oh, I know. But now she doesn't do that. She doesn't do that. She's definitely gotten a ticket. <laughs> she's gotten a ticket now a couple times already. Now she's a reformed already. driver. I love that. <laughs> yeah. She's very aggressive. She Actually, her driving style kind of reminds me of you. Like, um, oh. very aggressive in that sense, but also yeah, very yeah. precise. Um, so, yeah, that's that's definitely one of the things. But here's here's a, a, a pet peeve of mine, Yi. So okay. I've always thought this was really, really funny. And I could never understand why people are like this. There are people, there's two, two types of people, right? Mm -hmm. let, let me just say this. There are two types of drivers that are in a hurry. One is they don't care. They're going to hop on to the HOV oh, lane, okay. even if they're yeah. by themselves. I'm like, I don't yeah. care. I'm going to be on the HOV lane. I'm going to drive as fast as I can. And there's another one who will do just about everything except for get on getting into like are on the HOV lane. Meaning if they're in such a hurry, they yeah. would rather cut people off, drive like, like really aggressively. Yes. Yeah. Drive like a complete yes. idiot 
just so they can avoid the HOV lane because what? They're afraid of getting a ticket by yeah. going on the HOV yeah. lane, but still drive like a maniac. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. It's just, I just find it super hilarious that you will go through all the lengths of like cutting everyone off, you yeah. know, making yourself so visible to the cops that because you're driving like, uh, like a maniac, because you just don't want to get a look, possibly get a ticket. You're driving like an view. asshole. And yeah, it's just pretty like, much. And yeah, you're not yeah. really getting anywhere faster. You're not getting anywhere fast. And th that's actually one of my favorite things to do is like, I see someone rushing and I'm so mean though. <laughs> I see someone rushing just because they're just being assholes. Oh and I'm my like, gosh, yes. let me see if I can still beat this guy, you know, while yes, still yes. staying in this lane. <laughs> I totally do the same thing. I totally do the same thing. That makes me a bad driver. <laughs> Yeah, it makes me petty as F. <laughs> me too. <laughs> is what that is. My brother would do the same thing. He would take the HOV lane by himself when he like goes goes home from work or whatever. And I was like, wait, why do they do that? Like, aren't you afraid of a ticket? He's like, well, I did the math, and you know, <laughs> based on the amount of time I save and how much I earn, uh, it is still way worth it for me to take the HOV lane and risk getting the ticket. And he's like, if I get a ticket, I will pay it a hundred percent of the time. And like, I, I will do this. I will still continuously do this. And I'm like, <laughs> you are a man whose time is valuable. <laughs> I respect, I respect the, uh, <laughs> the commitment. I respect the commitment and the hustle and, uh, you know, <laughs> and be safe. More power to you. <laughs> yeah, seriously. That's, that's hilarious. I, that's such a, to me, such a boss move. I'm like, ugh. And, it is. Uh, well, it, you know, in a way it is. <laughs> we're not, we're not saying you should do this. That's a terrible idea. Yeah, but yeah, don't you, do you got to respect the guy's like uh, <laughs> commitment and <laughs> his his rationale. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Respect the guy who actually knows the value of his time, the <laughs> and the risk that is needed, right? Like the yes, risk, exactly. Yeah. The so risk that's, that's uh, associated. That's so, that's hilarious. Anyways, I think those are all hilarious and awesome reasons for how you know if you're a bad driver or a good driver. I have one more, one last. Oh, one. you have one more. Okay. Uh, yeah. You're a bad driver if I look around to one side of your car and I see curb rash on the wheels. No, not fair. Not fair. <laughs> I'm going to say not fair. I actually, funny enough, both my brother and I can attest to this. The uh -huh. Model 3, and I think even the Model, maybe just all Teslas. The okay. Model 3, though, uh, the, the rims protrude so much. And the first week, both him and I curbed our rims. And really? I and I believe that both my brother and I are, are quite decent drivers, quite good drivers. And it's just like it's it's so hard. Like, dude, that every Tesla you see will have curb rash. And if like interesting, and it's not a matter of like you're a good driver or a bad driver. It's like not a matter of if. It's just when. It's like riding a motorcycle. It's not a matter of like if you're gonna fall or not. It's about when you fall. when is gonna fall. Yeah, for the Tesla, <laughs> when will you curb it? And That's dude, hilarious. It's so freaking difficult. Yeah. Really? And, and like for mm -hmm. people that haven't done it yet, I'm just going to say you probably don't live in a big city where you have to parallel park. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like you probably have a you, garage. You probably yeah. have a garage. Yeah. You probably yeah. live in like Arizona or a Texas or whatever where you have like a <laughs> ton of space because otherwise like it is just freaking impossible. How interesting. I'm going to start looking at Tesla's now. Like yeah, checking look at the, them. the Dude, every Tesla <laughs> I see has got curb rash. How funny. That's it. Okay. Okay. Well, that, there's an exception speaking, to that rule. I agree with you. Generally speaking, I totally agree with yes. you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. See, see, I like that. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot, a lot more that we, we can come up with too in the next, like the next episode, probably. Oh, totally. Yeah, I, totally. I think that's a, I, I think that's yeah, a good yeah, yeah. start to that list.